So as promised, the first panel this morning is diversity, equity, and inclusion in global advertising campaigns. And now I'm going to turn things over to my good friend Paula from Argentina, who is going to introduce our panel. Paula? Thanks, Jeff. Welcome, everyone. Um, I couldn't be uh, <clears throat> happier to be moderating this panel on diversity, equity, and inclusion in global campaigns with these uh, gala fellows uh, that are all here. We are uh, really have a lot of content to share in a very short time, so we're going to do a very brief presentation of the speakers just by name and country, so you know who is speaking. But you can later access to uh, all of our information at galalaw.com and our full bios. Uh, so we have Gala member from Singapore, Denise Miranda, director at Miranda Asia. Uh, Gala member from the UK, Gerant Lloyd Taylor, partner at Louis Silkin. Uh, Gala member from India, Kanu Priya, partner at Kanan uh, Krishma. And uh, Gala member from Brazil, Valdir Rocha, partner at Veirano Advogados. In my case, I'm the Gala member for Argentina, and I'm a partner at uh, Bruxu. So um, let's move. Sorry, here. So, as you see, well, legislation, uh, you will see, like, um, it sounds boring, but I promise that it's going to be very brief. And um, it's necessary, I think, to have the context to better understand the cases that we are sharing later on. So, um, I think um, this is a global issue and it has its local singularities due to the different cultural and religious backgrounds and also the different economic and political and social situations that we have in in each country so it's important to know the context and it's great i think to have all these members from around the globe to share their their insights so well i was saying that we are starting with this boring part uh it's going to be very brief just to give the context uh we will be later discussing interesting cases and our speakers have a lot to to, to share um, I'm sure we all agree that brands are nowadays uh, more aware of their social responsibility, how they can contribute from their side to make a change in society. Also, consumers, I think, and users are more demanding. They just don't, um, they, they, they want to know not only the product or services that they are paying for, but they want to know which side the brands take. Are they green? Do they support the Black Lives Matter movement? What position do they take on gender, on, on diversity in their own structures and uh, even when we are all in the process of learning even ourselves in our firms uh, we are improving our own policies structures even our way of, of thinking and communicating on a on a day-by-day -day basis i think that the truth is that brands and media are a fundamental piece of the culture they are uh, taste makers and they clearly contribute to the strengthening of social representations in our society so i think uh, it's very important for those reasons and very relevant to discuss uh, these, these issues we are um, we are going into today. So, as you can see, well, the diversity encompasses uh, many things and depending on the region, the focus may, may be different on the different aspects, race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, physical abilities, and many more. And uh, I will start the conversation by referring briefly to Argentina, my country, where the gender issue has been a hot topic for a while, since uh, the social context uh, is quite adverse for women. Uh, unfortunately, according to official uh, sources, every 27 hours a sex-based crime is committed in Argentina. We call them feminicides or femicides, so they even have their, their own name. Um, in the first two months of, of 2021, 47 feminicides were committed. So it's a big deal for us and we are very sensitive on this kind of content. Uh, we have a local movement that is called Nuna Menos, which means not one less. Uh, this movement has been growing over the years and it's conformed by uh, Argentinian uh, feminists, but it's also led by a lot of uh, actresses and uh, celebrities in the country. And they have expanded their uh, initial initial calls to end abuse and violence, and now they include other women's rights. For example, they, they really played for a, a key role in the legalization of abortion. Uh, besides, we have INADI, 
uh, which is the National Institute Against Discrimination that uh, has an advertising observatory from which they constantly analyze ad pieces and they also make recommendations to the brands. Uh, when they see that they are using stereotypes in ads, uh, they call them, they sit them in the table and they work on it. Um, Inari has repeatedly said that uh, media and advertisers may sometimes inadvertently reinforce myths, beliefs and negative stereotypes about women and uh, of course these ads might lead to discriminatory uh, discursive practices and they could promote intolerance. So that is why uh, Inari is so uh, active and when they see that a brand is spreading a negative or a stereotype message, um, they, they, they take action. Uh, we also have CONARP, which is the self-regulatory uh, uh, body in Argentina, and they are also very, very active. Um, it is also worth mentioning that the, the Argentinian government has been very active also in this regard, and we have a specific regulations, as we can see here in the next slide, there is a law for the protection of women's integrity, uh, which specifically defines uh, media and symbolic violence. Uh, also, we have a media law that uh, also states that brands and media uh, should not spread discriminatory messages. Even the civil and commercial code has specific section on this regard. And of course, the self-regulatory uh, code uh, of CONARP also states that um, advertisers should uh, comply with all these pieces of law. Uh, and besides, of course, that they should avoid any discriminatory messages. Um, there are only a few, these are only sorry, a few of the of the pieces of legislation that are addressing this uh, gender and diversity issue. But well, of course, I don't want to, to bore you just like a sneak peek of, of it to mention the most relevant. And um, also, I wanted to, to let you know that the government has recently announced the creation of a new ministry of women, gender and diversity, which includes an office for care policies that uh, will coordinate uh, government efforts, efforts in this area. So I guess that uh, we should expect many more changes in the in the upcoming years. So after this uh, brief summary of the situation in my country, um, the first thing that I would like to ask the panel is how current uh, legislations are addressing the diversity and the equity issue in your own countries. And also if you can explain if there is any difference between uh, the traditional media and social media. So I will give the lead to Denise that will start. Hi, Paula. Thank you very much. I'm so super happy here today. Um, we are going to start off with the slide, which is about the uh, Singaporean view at a policy level. So obviously diversity and inclusion means different things to different people all over the world. Um, here in Singapore, a minister, a cabinet minister was recently asked about what culture, cancel culture and privilege. And very interestingly, he said, we have to do our best to ensure that identity politics that is polarizing never gets a chance to take root in the poor. When that happens, it refuels the worst tendencies in people. It breeds hostility and divisions. Now, um, this is this is the Singaporean way because we're kind of like between the East and West, a very developed country, but also with those underlying Eastern values. So it, it, we always think about the society before self, social values cohesion, um, peace, and, you know, multiracialism has been the underpinning since we were independent about 56 ago. Um, so this is a really interesting quote as a, at a policy level. And I think media stakeholders and advisors, um, advertisers as well, need to be aware of this um, policy level uh, view. Um, so if we you know, think about brands as advocates with social responsibilities. Um, this is going to be a tricky minefield, I think, in our part of the world, um, generally. Um, Paula, if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, I have this visual and it's something you guys can take away. It's a, it's a golf course. Um, obviously, on the right, we have the players and that's the, the, the the area where they play, and then you've got the white stumps, which are markers. Those are the out of bounds markers, and the area to the left is where you can't play. So it's our job as as media advisors and as as advertisers to navigate those out of bounds 
those boundaries. Um, and this can be a challenge, it's quite tricky. Um, and if we could go perhaps to the next slide, I will explain this. Thank you. So I think um, this is a, is, is a very tricky issue on the boundary, exactly on the boundary. And we can see here, we have an escalator in a mall, uh, a cinema actually, uh, which is advertising a, an event, a pride event called Pink Dot. Uh, some background on this, uh, we unfortunately inherited um, during uh, the British colonial times, a piece of legislation called the Penal Code and Section 377A uh, actually prohibits uh, homosexual activity between men and that statute still exists. So um, technically uh, homosexual activity is prohibited uh, under, under statute, under criminal statute, although we've had movements to um, get it uh, repealed uh, based on un unconstitutional grounds, but uh, those um, cases have failed so far. So we have this advert um, that's advertising an event, uh, Pink Dot, which is a pride event and it's a legal assembly. It's, it's sort of like got the police permits and everything. Um, it just says the date and the time and the venue of the event, um, but in small uh, tagline below the event name, you can see it, the tagline is supporting the freedom to love. And um, this was found by the Advertising Authority of Singapore to cross the line. Um, so this is where the boundary is and um, that had to be taken down. Um, so if I could maybe go to the next slide. Um, we, we did uh, have this question of are things different on social media and um, we have here a good example from the W uh, hotel, a uh, luxury hotel, I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Um, staycations have become a big thing over the COVID-19 period. So um, we have this advert, which got, you know, 8,600 likes, which is quite a lot for a luxury boutique hotel. Um, and I, it, it's, it's been allowed. So it's not, uh, no one has taken it down and there's been no, uh, huge controversy about it. So while the rules are the same in the advertising code, um, this is allowed, whereas the um, previous example was not allowed. Uh, Paula, if I could go to the next slide. Um, and here we have some comments on the uh, Instagram post. Um, of course, we're going to get the, the sort of haters who say like, look, homosexual activity is still illegal in Singapore? Are you promoting a crime? Are you encouraging people to break the law? And, um, but the overwhelming majority of people have commented that this is a great move and um, that, you know, this is, this is the way to go. And I think young people on social media do things, do things differently. And uh, we have great hope that this um, terrible piece of criminal legislation will be struck down at some point or that parliament will take action. Um, so that's just a brief, um, summary of, of how the legislation is interpreted in Singapore. Thank you. Thanks, Anise. I'm going to talk to you about the UK. Uh, and the good news is that the situation in the UK is relatively straightforward when it comes to advertising because the rules are all contained uh, in these specific CAP codes. It's a self-regulatory system, so we don't look at complex laws. It all comes from these advertising codes. It's not different um, when you compare new media to old media. Uh, but what is different is on TV, the rule is slightly different. TV and radio, you have to look at the BCAP code. And for everything else, you look at the CAP code. On the next slide, uh, we'll just have a look at the key principles that bind the two, which are relevant here. So all ads have to be legal, decent, honest, and truthful. If you're European, you'll have heard that a thousand times. Uh, you mustn't mislead, harm, or offend. Um, and that perhaps more importantly, in this context, ads have to be prepared with a sense of responsibility to consumers and society. And obviously that sort of is a more subjective area and it's something that evolves over time. And we'll have a look in a moment at some examples of that. Before we do, let's look at the specific rules on the next slide. So in the non-broadcast context, which includes online and everything else apart from TV, essentially the rule is quite simple. Ads must not contain anything that is likely to cause serious or widespread offence. And that's quite a high bar. So just because something's a bit sort of challenging to some people doesn't mean that it breaches this rule. And particular care has to be taken around the grounds of all of these things listed here. 
these are various sort of strands of diversity and inclusion that we hear about a lot. It's, I know it's reductive to put them into different categories, but sometimes it's quite useful in this sort of context to focus on these specific areas where particular care has to be taken. On the next slide, you'll see that the BCAP rule is essentially the same. So it mustn't cause serious or widespread offence against generally accepted moral, social or cultural standards. It's different wording, but it really means the same thing. You're looking for something that causes serious or widespread offence, otherwise it's, it's not a problem. And on the next slide, I just wanted to highlight that some one category, if you like, that comes under some sort of special protections is the issue of gender stereotyping. So a new rule was introduced in June 2019, which says that ads mustn't include harmful gender stereotypes. So serious or widespread offence, which we've already looked at, that applies to everything. But this rule introduced the concept of gender stereotypes that cause harm. And on the next slide, the reason for that that was given is that the ASA conducted various research into this area and found that ads were addressing various sort of stereotypes slowly but surely, but in the area of gender things were not moving quickly enough and they conducted research which showed that stereotypes can cause inequality in, in society as costs for all of us and it's in the interest of men and women and the economy etc uh, for these issues to be addressed. It is a little bit um, sort of binary in the sense that they focus on women and men. Um, there's a whole sort of array of issues in between that, um, but that is an area of special focus in the UK, and we'll have a look at some examples later. Thanks, Paul. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in Brazil, we do not have an advertising law or a code, so we apply the provisions of the Constitution, the Consumer uh, Defense Code, the self-regulation code and other laws. Uh, to put Brazil into a perspective in terms of equity and diversity, uh, we are living now in a contrasting situation because for the last 10 to 15 years, uh, equity and diversity movements have grown. NGOs and large companies and large firms have established their diversity committees. Uh, we, we have one in our firm, for example, uh, very active. But at the same time, uh, at the federal government level, you know, a, a, a group of conservatives was elected. And uh, so there is this contrast now between the private sector uh, and the NGOs and the federal government, uh, which has this group of conservative people and, and uh, so we see that on the streets and in the parliament, parliament. So the constitution has fundamental principles such as the promotion of uh, well-being of all without prejudice of origin, race, sex, color, age, etc. Uh, it has its fundamental rights, including uh, freedom of speech. But on the other hand, uh, for example, racism is considered a crime. Uh, the Consumer Protection Code considers discriminatory advertising as abusive, so that's legal grounds for, for any lawsuit. Uh, and the Self-Regulation Code uh, contains cer certain provisions on uh, the use of uh, young people in alcohol commercials, for example, or the use of extreme sensuality. We're going to show some examples of, of beer ads uh, about that. Uh, we, we have a an anti-racism racism law that applies to advertising. As, as you may know, Brazil has 200, 211 million people and 54% uh, of Brazilians uh, declare, self-declare them as blacks or brown. So because we had 300 and plus years of uh, slavery, so half of the Brazilian population is, is black. And you're gonna see some examples of racism and advertising. Next please, Paula. So we also have some state laws, but they are controversial because uh, most jurists understand that the federal government should legislate on advertising. Uh, I brought two examples, uh, a law that was enacted in the state of Rio de Janeiro in 2018, another law of the Southern state of Santa Catarina of 2019, uh, they impose fines to uh, sexist advertising or misogynist uh, advertising. 
but uh, I'm not aware of any uh, lawsuit uh, questioning the constitutionality of these laws. Next problem. So as I said, uh, most of Brazilians are, uh, I mean, 54 percent percent of Brazilians are self-declared in black or brown. Uh, what the trend that we see now is that in traditional media, only uh, seven percent of black men appear in commercials and and 22 percent of black women. And now in digital media, those percentages have grown to 23 and 35 percent. Paula. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us here. Uh, in India, as such, there are no laws or regulations which promotes diversity and inclusion in advertising. Although uh, the Advertising Standard Council of India, a self-regulatory body which has been recognized by the Supreme Court of India and various departments of government, uh, they, uh, they have clearly specified in the code for self-regulation that no advertisement shall be permitted which derives any race, caste, color, creed, gender, or nationality. The Advertising Standard Council of India has specifically cautioned against uh, skin lightening or fairness products. Uh, their code for self-regulation stipulates that uh, advertisement should not discriminate on the basis of skin color, and it should definitely not reinforce negative social stereotyping on the basis of skin color. Also, the advertisement should not perpetuate gender-based discrimination because of skin color. Uh, also, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, they have put, a, uh, they have put forth a proposal to amend uh, the Drugs and Magic Remedies Objectionable Advertisement Act of 1954. This draft amendment proposes to ban advertisements of uh, products such as fairness creams or cures for premature aging or graying of hair or for improvement in height of children or adults or for increasing brain capacity and memory. So uh, anyone who, contra uh, who contravenes these provisions, they may be punishable with both fine as well as imprisonment, and imprisonment could be rigorous of up to five years. Uh, however, the advertising in India has still a long way to go as far as diversity, equity, and inclusion in ad campaigns are concerned, especially when it comes to traditional media. Apart from a few exceptions, the advertising on social media, they tend to project the same uh, North Indian fair cosmopolitan image, which is projected in Bollywood movies. There's an assumption that everyone wants to look like a Bollywood star and live like them. Even when uh, rural images are projected, they tend to be overly simplistic or overly innocent. Real people with real problems are seldomly depicted. On social media advertisements, uh, I mean, the scene is quite different. Advertisements are boldly exploring taboo, tap, uh, taboo topics, which may be objected on con, uh, I mean, conventional media. In fact, uh, there are many examples of advertisements on social media or digital platforms, which may not be considered as within the bounds of generally accepted standards of public decency and propriety. But these advertisements are still being appreciated by the viewers, and no action is taken against them by the concerned authorities. One such example is of Irvin Clapp, who launched a digital advertisement film in support of India's LGBT community. This ad portrays a father's struggle to accept his daughter's homosexual relationship. So even these kind of ads are being uh, viewed on social media and they are actually being appreciated. So the fact remains that the social media or digital platforms, they provide tremendous liberties in context of creative licenses to companies or brands. The brands and companies they are looking for uh, innovative uh, for innovative ways to connect with their millennial customers, and they want to break the stereotypes and uh, boldly raise controversial social issues uh, without the fear of repercussions. And that can only happen on social media or digital platform. So that's all for India. Thank you. Thank you, and well, thanks all for your interesting insights. I think it's fascinating to compare how these uh, issues are addressed in the different uh, jurisdictions. Uh, well, in the case of Argentina, the most common stereotype using ads is the related to women stereotypes in doing uh, household chores or portrayed as a typical housewife that is at the shopping mall with uh, the husband's credit card. Uh, however, this tendency has been changing over the years, and um, I have this example of uh, a couple 
uh, from a bank that is Galicia's bank that is one of the of the uh, most important banks in Argentina. Um, well, here uh, I wanted to refer to a very uh, new piece of legislation that is one of the central banks that recently issued uh, new regulations to prevent stereotyping uh, behaviors in relation to financial services. Uh, this new regulation was issued last year and establishes uh, a policy for the eradication of violence and discrimination based on gender uh, in advertising. And it applies both to traditional and, and, and digital media. And according to these new regulations, uh, banks must avoid practices or actions that reflect or promote a stereotyped and hierarchical views of gender, sexist language, symbolic or, or violence against women and people from the LGBT uh, group. Uh, banks must also avoid mansplaining using the image of a woman as a mere object that is unrelated to the product that they are trying to market or associating the, 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 the image of women with um, stereotype uh, behaviors. Um, the truth is that the, the, the industry was already working on this and, and was already aware of this problem and they were trying to, to change uh, this uh, paradigm. And uh, this was the case of this couple. I was saying the, the Galicia's Bank couple. This is a, a, an ad saga that started uh, more than 10 years ago. And at the beginning, uh, you can see in the first picture that the, the woman was portrayed um, as the, the typical housewife expending the money of his of her wife, of her husband. And in the second, that is a, a recent one, uh, she is like uh, with him making a purchase decision together, and he's now portrayed like more goofy, and she's the one like is more smart and that uh, take all the decisions at the at the house. So I think that they are uh, they were already changing, but it's always good news to have uh, this kind of of new uh, pieces of of legislation. So Gerard, if you want to uh, share some examples on how stereotypes are working uh, or are used in, in your country. Sure, Please go so I'll touch, I'll touch briefly on um, the fact that we have special rules for gender stereotyping and that's that's an area where we've seen a lot of change. I think the general consensus around consumers and the regulators is we, we don't want to see these sort of old-fashioned stereotypical roles in advertising but there's an acceptance that obviously stereotypes form a role in most advertising, given that you're dealing with a very quick medium, 30 second ads or billboards, etc. If we look at the next slide, um, these predated the new rules, and these were one of the sort of main examples that were held out as being the problem. So when you juxtapose uh, female characters, this was selling apt mil milk, but it was all about showing female characters wanting to grow up to be ballerinas and male characters wanting to grow up to be mathematicians, scientists, astronauts, etc. Uh, so this, this summarises pretty well what was going on. And it's an issue, obviously, for global ads, because the UK has, has sort of set a slightly higher bar when it comes to harmful stereotyping than most other countries. Uh, but it is something that is still quite topical. Uh, if we look at the next slide, somebody asked in the chat at this, while we're looking at this, um, how are political ads treated in the UK in terms of being decent and honest? And I think that's slightly off topic in a way, uh, because if we look at decent and honesty, and uh, sorry, to give a politician's answer to duck that, the, sh the short answer though is that um, political ads are largely not covered by the CAP codes, but the government can get into trouble. So let's look at this topical example. The UK government during the pandemic put out this ad to encourage people to stay home and save lives, obviously because of um, COVID. It used this really unfortunate stock image, or maybe it didn't, but the agency did, and it shows uh, largely female characters. So you've got female representation, but when you look at what they're actually doing, uh, there's a woman doing the cleaning with her young daughter. There's a woman doing the homework with her two young daughters. There's a woman next to what looks like a dining table or an ironing board holding a baby. And the only man uh, is sort of having his sort of arms around his family sitting on the sofa. So this would, I think, be a breach of the new rules. What happens ordinarily, though, is that the rules take quite a while to enforce, and so this kind of ad is just withdrawn with huge embarrassment to whoever's the advertiser, in this case the government, uh, and, and an apology follows very swiftly after condemnation on social media. So that's often how these things play out. If we look at the next slide as well, there's another example, this time of the NHS, 
And I feel quite bad picking on the NHS during these times, but, but this is an ad that was put out, again, by the government and NHS in, in combination. And they portrayed, this, this is not gender specific, it's, it's more about race. They portrayed two people, one of whom is black, one of whom is white. And the message was, let's keep making space to help stop the spread. And it was all around not getting too close to people uh, who aren't wearing masks, etc. very early on in the pandemic. And very unfortunately, they chose a black character to be the sort of demonized one with this green mist around her to show that she's sort of surrounded by germs. So it's a really, really um, ill thought out campaign, um, or at least ill thought out ad, especially when the pandemic was adversely impacting the AME communities in the UK and elsewhere. Um, this was another example where the regulator didn't need to kick in. Everybody gave the NHS and government a kicking on uh, social media, and that's how the ad was withdrawn very, very swiftly. And on the next slide, another strand of this, uh, which is sort of related, is the issue of body image. I know this is something else that is a common theme across other markets as well. The issues of body image aren't covered by specific rules, but come generally under the gender stereotyping rules. So if you show a man looking particularly weedy and not muscly, like the old Mr. Muscle character, um, and that's made into a punchline, that would be harmful or offensive under the new rules uh, because of the broader in interpretation of them. We saw ads like this, are you beach body ready? Uh, and it was a very sort of thin female character um, and again, that's another gender stereotype around women that is, is not very healthy, but it's been one that's been around for decades and what the ASA wanted to um, improve with its new rule. The great thing again is that the response from people on social media, but also other brands, uh, this is a typical sort of Dove and Unilever style approach, which is to show much more normal looking people and say, yes, we are beach body ready, essentially just as we are. So again, the rules are there, but in the UK, the social media response and the PR around it often acts much more quickly um, to sanction that kind of bad behaviour or poor judgment on the part of advertisers. Thank you, Paula. Can you mention Yes, thank you, Paula. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, advertising in India still has a long way to go as far as diversity, equity, and inclusion is concerned. So real people with real and diverse backgrounds and real life problems are never depicted. Rather, they're seldomly depicted. Frequently, stereotypes such as nagging mothers, carefree millennials, men promoting products which are symbolic of strength, and women performing domestic chores, they are often depicted in ads. In this particular ad of Imperial Blue, uh, this is of Men Will Be Men campaign. In this ad, actually what happened was uh, there was an attractive woman who calls for the lift and the man who's already standing in the lift, he presses all the buttons for all the floors solely for the purpose of staring at the women. And uh, so basically this ad is not just objectifying women, but uh, this justification that men will be men, it makes it even worse. In another ad of Imperial Blue, uh, what happened was that a man uh, spotted an attractive woman coming towards him and he helps an old uh, lady to uh, cross the to cross the road uh, for uh, for the purpose of evoking some empathy and catching the attractive women's attention. He then sees another woman behind him and takes the old lady in the opposite direction. So this ad portrayed that men will do anything to grab women's attention, even make an old lady uh, walk twice. Also, uh, the women were supposed to look the other way or to deal with such kind of obnoxious behavior because, as they say, men will be men. Uh, Paula, in the next, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, in this slide, uh, this is basically out of Kellogg's uh, diet, diet foods. So basically, it reinforces the idea of slim body equals perfect body. In fact, in the ad to go to a wedding, a lady needs to, I mean, it's specified that a lady needs to be slim and she needs to reduce weight, otherwise she'll lose her confidence. So uh, the question is that why is uh, our confidence always linked with slim body or weight loss? Can't a healthy or even overweight women, can't they be beautiful or confident? Why do we need to be slim? Uh, next, in the next slide, uh, 
this slide raises a very important question that uh, why in automobile ads only men are portrayed as drivers, especially in SUVs and the likes. Are men better drivers or are women simply not considered as target audience? What is the reason that the men are portrayed as drivers in uh, the automobiles ad? Uh, in the next slide, this uh, this slide I mean uh, shows that men are usually associated with strength and toughness. So uh, basically, men in art films they are relegated to promoting products of symbolic strength, uh, from TNT steel rods to cements and to SUVs. We don't see them uh, engaged in everyday domestic work. Rather, they are associated with strength and toughness. Uh, the household chores like cooking food or changing babies' nappies or massaging the baby, they are often depicted as women's work, even though the reality has changed quite a bit. Thank you, Paula. Thanks, Valdir. Well, uh, this is a very interesting case of stereotyping that involves racism and misogyny. Uh, as I said, uh, Brazil has a large black population. That beer ad was published uh, all over the country, and three uh, activists, black women, filed a lawsuit against the brewery and the advertising agency for racism, and they were claim claiming moral damages because they were affected by the ad. However, they filed a, a civil damages lawsuit in a civil court, and and they lost. Uh, the judge, who's a middle-aged white man, didn't find it racist, he, he thought it was humorous, agreed with the defendant's argument, and uh, condemned the three activists to pay uh, legal fees, court fees. But at the same time, at, the, at CONAR, you know, the Self-Regulation uh, Council, more than 80 people filed complaints against the brewery. So CONAR, which is formed by representatives of, of the media, the agencies, the consumer associations, et cetera, uh, agreed with the, with the uh, plaintiff's complaints, you know, with the consumer's complaints, and found that the uh, ad was both uh, misogynist, misogynist and racist because it compares the, the body of a black woman to the uh, dark beer bottle uh, in, in my opinion, in a very racist, a racist way. If you read the slogan we, below the picture, you probably agree with that. So, Conar banned the ad. Next, please, Paul. As I said, uh, in the beer industry, for many years, uh, uh, sexy women were used on, on ads and commercials, and these two are typical examples of misogyny and and the one on the left and the one on the right is an example of racism and misogyny. The, the one on the left, uh, there's a comparison between the content in milliliters of a beer bottle, of a beer can, and, and what uh, is supposed to be the content of the implants of the model. Uh, so that, there were a lot of complaints about this, and it was banned by Conard. The one on the right is both a racist and misogynist. Uh, the, the body of a black woman is wrapped by a, a beer uh, package containing the brand. And the slogan is both racist and misogynist. This black one went from good to better, now with a sexier bottle. So the dark beer bottle compared to a black woman. That was also banned by Conar. Paula? I think I'm up next. Um, so I think in Singapore, uh, we have many of the same issues, um, beauty stereotypes that Kanu spoke about, um, the standard of beauty being uh, the fairer skin rather than the darker skin. We've got um, many uh, celebrities who are whitened. This is a UK celebrity called MIA. She's a rapper. Um, she was whitened for this magazine cover, for example. And this is not uh, an advert, but it's still um, representative of what goes on. Paula, could I have the next slide as well? Um, so this, 
the beauty standard again, um, beauty products being sold, um, uh, depicting, you know, the darker skinned individual as a loser or, you know, just being white, you will win is the tagline for the first one, which is actually an example from Thailand. Um, the second one is an example from the Philippines at, uh, below, and that connotes that you will have an advantage if you're fairer. So, you know, you have an, a disadvantage if you are darker as, as a result. Um, and that was pulled by the Filipino um, authority. Apollo, could I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, this one uh, divided Singaporeans. This was an ad in Singapore for an e-payment system. Um, there is the same actor basically portraying four characters um, to show that, you know, ostensibly this e-payment system is universal. Um, everyone can use it, but then he's got a Chinese lady, he's got a Malay lady, a Muslim lady in a, in a headscarf, and then he's also depicted in brown face below that um, with curly hair um, in an office suit. And then below that, he depicts his own race, which is to be a Chinese man. Um, this divided people. It was not considered by the authority, to, uh, the Advertising Standards Authority to cross the line. So, um, but it was uh, noted that this was racially insensitive and that um, advertisers and should be, take more responsibility, but it, it was deemed not to cross the line. Um, Paula, can I have the next slide, please? Um, here we have harmful gender stereotypes. Unfortunately, we don't have the same legislation that you do in the UK, like Durant said about stereotypes. So we've got the pregnant lady <laughs> Um, and this was to an advert for a property development. Um, and they're trying to say that, that this property is very near a hospital. So the guy is continuing to play his um, PlayStation while the woman has actually gone into labor. And that's just a terrible example. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. And this is my last slide. Um, this is a Singapore icon. It's been said that uh, Singapore Airlines without the Singapore girl is like Disneyland without Mickey Mouse. So this is uh, a very kind of stereotypical advert for Singapore Airlines showing the Asian kind of subservient serving uh, lady. And um, you never see a man in um, these airline ads. So <laughs> particularly for Singapore Airlines, just because the Singapore girl in her uniform is kind of an icon of the brand. Um, and that's all I have. Those are kind of our harmful stereotypes. Thank you. Well, thank you. So thanks for sharing all those examples. They, they were great. So uh, I think that, well, the use of stereotypes is still very common as we can see in advertising. So what I would like uh, you to, to discuss and to tell us is how local brands are promoting diversity and inclusion uh, in your countries. Uh, in Argentina, I have these two brief uh, cases to refer that are cases uh, of a study by Inadi showing a change of paradigm. Uh, this is a good example of a, um, a cleaning product called Mr. Musculo, Mr. Muscle. Uh, in the past, Mr. Muscle appears as a superhero, like trying to save the, the desperate housewives that was in charge of the, uh, of the household chores. Uh, but the brand has drastically changed the message and has uh, like decon deconstructed the, the stereotype indicating that uh, these household uh, chores are uh, to be performed both by, by female and by also the, 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 the males at home. And in a recent ad, they were showing a couple, for example, dancing in a very sexy dance, uh, doing the cleaning together. So um this was very explicitly uh, recognized by inadi and welcomed this uh, new approach um also in the case of unilever the the dab the inadi has recognized how dab uh, brand started to portray non-hegemonic gender identities from different et ethnic uh, backgrounds uh also different choices that they make about how uh, to lead their lives during the different stage so this has some of the examples that are going on in Argentina. So, uh, Kanu, if you can share yours. Thank you, Paula. In the past couple of years, uh, we have witnessed some change in the usual train. Brands are now delving into the social issues and voicing their thoughts, uh, which may not be asked for the accepted social norms. By going against stereotype, 
the brands are trying to build a progressive image and to connect with the millennial generation who want the brands they associate with to mirror their progressive and pragmatic attitude. Havels has released a series of progress, uh, progressive ads over the years with the caption, hashtag winds of change, hava badlegi. So uh, this ad campaign is depicting the changing mindset of society with a promise of better tomorrow. Uh, the first ad, it talks about gender discrimination in film certification. This ad basically uh, depicts members of social board discussing film certification. One of the members of board suggests an A certificate as opposed to the U certificate, which is uh, the general consensus. So the first person who defends his stance by saying that their names were post topless at many places in the film and comments that uh, kare to nude, larka kare to dude, meaning if a girl does it, it's a dude scene. If a guy does it, he's a dude. Follow the next slide, please. In, uh, this is another art of Havels. In this art, a woman is correcting the tune her roommate is playing. And uh, when sh uh, she tries to correct the tune, uh, her roommate, he derides her and asks her for a sandwich and asks her to go to kitchen. So she goes to kitchen and gives an impromptu musical show using all the Havels appliances. The guy finally, he realizes his mistake and is, I mean, and uh, is uh, finally he goes to make the sandwich. So uh, in another one of Havel's art, uh, couple is getting their marriage registered in the registrar's office. So they inform to a very surprised and but very pleased official that the husband will take his wife's name instead of wife taking husband's name, as is the prevalent custom here. So he says that he will become Mr. Pandit rather than his wife becoming Mrs. Verma. In the next slide, uh, Another perfect example of diversity and inclusion is depicted. This was the digital campaign titled Gold is Beautiful launched by Mindra, an Indian fashion e-commerce marketplace company for its ethnic wear. So uh, there are three films in the campaign and it focuses on issues like homosexuality, single parenting and staying single. Earlier these issues were taboo in India. In fact, uh, homosexuality is still one, but, uh, but this art, I mean, it beautifully portrayed the relationship and uh, it actually became viral. It is a story of a lesbian couple planning to reveal their hidden relationship. So Mentra basically presented a bold voice on social issues concerning modern Indian women. And they underlined this fact that wearing ethnic app apparels is a choice and not a compromise. So airing such advertisements on social media, it conveys a very strong message and at the same time, it escapes the scrutiny which the conventional media is subjected to. In the next slide, uh, Ariel has, I mean, this was a, uh, this was the art campaign of Ariel, uh, has shared the load campaign. In this, an old couple can be seen as doing household chores together. They are sharing the load and a mother is uh, teaching her son how to uh, wash clothes in a washing machine as opposed to the daughter who is typically supposed to do it. Thank you, Paula. As Paula said, uh, Unilever has the global campaigns of inclusion, equity, and diversity. And this one was, uh, was uh, launched in Brazil. And they had a series of limited edition of bottles of different sizes of, of Dove, uh, shampoo, uh, uh, soap, etc., and uh, they were showing that bodies. I mean, there was a an allusion to the different shapes of bodies. Next, Paulo. Again, in Brazil, as we did in Argentina, the Unstereotype Alliance was launched by Unilever. It's sponsored by the United Nations and other cosmetic companies. It's global, uh, and in Brazil, they used uh, women of different shapes and, and races and colors. Next. Denise. Everyone, um, yes, uh, we in Singapore, we um, don't really have uh, too many campaigns as such um, as we've heard from the other panelists, but um, I wanted to feature this uh, lady who is, uh, you know, this was a very powerful storytelling advertisement. 
uh, was about an elderly lady who's still working to this day. She basically sharpens knives for a living. And uh, I thought this was great because this is a skincare brand, Vaseline, which is a well-beloved brand all over the world. And we've got, um, you know, a, a, an elderly lady depicting um, and representing the brand. So it was a powerful story. Um, and uh, Paula, can I have the next slide, please? There she is again. Um, what was interesting as well was uh, how she kept up with the latest um, techniques on, um, you know, sharpening her blade. Um, she was depicted um, actually watching a YouTube video um, to keep up to date and um, continuously improving herself throughout the years. So I thought this was just absolutely lovely to see someone um, elderly actually using technology and continually improving herself and also defying all the biases. Um, you know, she's in an industry that is is male dominated, you know, uh, sharpening of knives is, is still an industry here. <laughs> but um, Yes, uh, could I have the next slide, please? Um, here we have a local teleco uh, te telecommunication brand, which, uh, uh, you know, has a, this is an influencer who is quite popular. Her name is Preeti. Um, you know, she's of a uh, darker complexion and she's also, I, I suppose, plus sized. Um, and, you know, she's there representing the biggest telco brand in Singapore, which I think is fantastic. Uh, next slide, please. Um, here we also have uh, another minority race represented. Um, she is Malay, um, so Malays constitute about 14% of the population here. And, um, you know, this was another powerful storytelling by the telecommunication company, same teleco, telco called Singtel. Um, and I think I really have to commend uh, Singtel and the other telecommunication companies because they have been really at the forefront because they encourage communication and they can tell really wonderful stories around um, different segments of society. So this is great. Thanks, your end. Thank you. In the UK, we have had better representation over the last few years, but it's still a conversation that is ongoing. Um, race, sexual orientation and disability are just some of those strands that we've seen a little bit of progress on. And on the first slide, I'll talk about uh, a Sainsbury's advert very briefly. So this was a Christmas ad for Sainsbury's and it featured an all black family. Uh, there weren't any white people in the advert and you would think this is completely uncontroversial, but some people found it to be incredibly controversial. It triggered quite a vocal minority of people to become quite aggressive on social media. There were online petitions against the ad and calls by some people to boycott the supermarket, which is incredibly shameful to see but it was very widely reported in the press. And so it became part of the conversation uh, that was ongoing in terms of representation of race in adverts. Sainsbury's responded very, very well. Uh, they included messages on social media that talked about being an inclusive retailer and really obviously stuck with their message. What was great was also seeing their competitors, other supermarkets um, adding stand against racism, hashtag stand against ra racism to their TV ads and really sort of embracing this and supporting and being seen to support very visibly their competitors who are, who are going through such challenges. Um, and the channel, Channel 4, also did the same thing. The next example is from Argos. This was essentially the same, same thing. It preceded that ad. It was an all black cast and it was a same sex couple. It was two women and their two children. Um, and it triggered all of the same, same issues, I'm, I'm sad to say, um, but it, at least it feels as though we've had the first, and so it helps really to move the conversation on in the country. In the next example, uh, there's a cream egg advert that came out. It featured this LGBT couple, well, specifically two gay men, and there were lots of different couples and lots of different people eating their cream eggs in different ways. Uh, this couple did it in this particularly playful way and they were dancing around. Nothing that would have triggered complaints had it been a man and a woman. Um, but again, it triggered a petition online, uh, which gathered 26,000 signatures, which is very depressing to see. And the actors themselves were targeted with some comments on social media. So I think one point I wanted to make was that it's important in these sorts of contexts to make sure that you're taking care of the actors and other people who are taking part within the advertising to make sure that they're supported whenever you put these campaigns out there. It's going to generate a bit of a reaction, sometimes a very extreme reaction for no reason. Um, but 
that's something that I think did happen here and, and it was very great to see this company again move the dial. And the final example I just want to mention is Maltesers, who I want to congratulate, frankly, for including a lot of disability representation in their advertising in a way that's not tokenistic, in a way that they fully leaned into and embraced. Um, you can Google Maltesers adverts and you can find these. It's, it's a great sort of cross-section of different ads where the disabled person is, it's, you know, fully integrated into the ad. They're not the buck of the joke, which has happened in a few advertisements in the past, unbelievably. Um, they're actually giving the punchline, and it's it's fantastically well done. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thanks, also. Well, I think that we are running out of time, so this maybe will, would be our last uh, question. But uh, following this line of conversation, what I want uh, you to to tell us if there is any categories of products or services that are more inclusive, um, what I mean if uh, that uh, if they are more prone to uh, showing stereotyping in their ads or on the contrary to embracing diversity and inclusion in their ads. And if you can share some examples, uh, we should do this very quickly because we are almost in time. Valdir. Well, in Brazil, I, I would say that cosmetic companies are leading the way. This is a campaign on Valentine's Day uh, run by Obotifari, a very large chain of franchise stores. They used uh, same-sex couples. Um, there was complaints uh, by consumers before Conar, but Conar uh, dismissed the request and did not ban the ad. Next. Another campaign on Father's Day by the same company, Obotifari, with a black, total, totally black family. Uh, there were 16,000 plus dislikes on YouTube, but uh, on the other on the hand, a campaign by black influencers supporting uh, Botifaria. Next. Uh, Natura is the, probably the largest uh, 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 cosmetics company in Brazil. They, they own now Avon. And on Father's Day, they use a transgender man uh, who is a celebrity. Uh, very well known son of a pop singer and there was a lot of transphobic response and uh, a, a campaign to boycott Natura uh, led by evangelist Malafaya who's a ultra conservative but on the, on the other hand the, the most popular influencer in Brazil or YouTuber in Brazil Felipe Neto did the opposite and so the campaign was kept and uh, there were no complaints about it, formal complaints. Next. That is a transphobic uh, outdoor ad. It was subject to a lawsuit filed by a transgender woman who felt uh, she was disrespected and, and, and found it uh, uh, aggressive. And, and she won the case and, and, and she was awarded with 5,000 reais as moral damages in the, in the court court action. Next. Uh, senior citizens in Brazil are uh, more uh, representative than children. There are more people over 60 than under 14. They're responsible for almost half of the consumption, but on the other hand, they're not included. Uh, only 3% appear on commercials. Next. Denise. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Vardir. Um, I'm just going to quickly uh, go through two examples in Singapore. Um, this advert it features Auntie Yoli, who is a nanny from the Philippines. We have tons of nannies from the Philippines here. There's a huge Filipino community that works here as overseas Filipinos. And uh, I love that Singtel featured uh, a, a nanny in this advert. Joseph Schooling who is on the right. He is the first um, gold medal winner in the Olympics for swimming uh, from Singapore. And he, he was talking about the unwavering support of his nanny, uh, who was his nanny for 19 years and counting. So um, uh, that's a very good example. Uh, could I have the next slide, please? Um, this is a advert a collaboration between P&G and a shopping platform called Shopee, which um, is prevalent in Southeast Asia. Um, we have uh, the father in the family who is featured using um, softener, detergent downy, and then we've got uh, him 
tackling the changing of diapers and him tackling the um, brushing of teeth. So, so it was kind of featured in quite a fun way, which I suppose you could argue is pretty stereotypical, you know, the gamification of these chores. But, um, you know, I thought it was quite fun. And that was done in collaboration with Women's Day, which was just last week. Um, I just wanted to say these are two great examples. Thank you, Paula. In India, there are certainly some categories of products and services that are more prone to showing stereotyping in their ads. For instance, as far as baby products are concerned, it's always women who are depicted as feeding babies or changing nappies or oiling the baby. So the question is that do fathers have no role in raising an infant or why is it always mothers who are depicted in the baby product ads? Uh, in the next slide. Uh, Kitchen appliances are another category in which it's always women who are depicted and that to a typical uh, image of a housewife or a homemaker uh, in uh, in sari cooking food or holding kitchen appliances. So uh, the women, they don't need to wear a traditional sari to cook food. And uh, I mean, why should they always be the one to cook food, which is actually not the reality. So basically, the reality is very different from what's being uh, advertised and uh, so basically, these are, uh, I mean, these are some of the stereotypical image. Thank you, Paula. I'll wrap up and then we'll go to our next panel. Yes, sorry. Yes, well, we, we run out of time, unfortunately, but I think that we have heard this uh, thoroughly and well, we, we had a couple of, of uh, examples left, uh, but we will circulate the, the uh, slides later so you will have access to the whole uh, PowerPoint presentation. And I think that uh, I would say that it's important if you're planning a global campaign uh, to clear it locally, because as you uh, could see, well, we have uh, a lot of uh, different pieces of legislation in force and also the contest is uh, different uh, in each country and we focus on different aspects of the diversity and inclusion uh, questions. So uh, I think the, the smart thing to do is well uh, to know the, the market where you're launching the, the, the ad before doing it. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Paula, uh, Garant, uh, Denise, Kanu and Valdir. Thanks for a terrific panel. Uh, we are now going to switch things up. Um, so we're going to technologically uh, remove this panel from the stage and we're going to uh, go to our next our next topic. Um, one of the issues that we frequently cover at Gala is uh, comparative advertising and looking at what standards are for comparative advertising around the world, uh, some of the differences in terms of the rules governing comparative advertising, as well as uh, some of the different ways that uh, advertising disputes are, are challenged and uh, resolved around the world.